Hi friends, it may be bank holiday Monday, but the signings do not stop at Ipswich Town for a holiday. They've just made signing number 17, Christian Walton, a keeper on loan from Premier League, Brighton and Hove Albion. And, and Andy, we thought the keeper spot was one that was definitely sorted in the summer. Turns out that may not be the case. Uh, and now signing number 17 is another keeper. What? How do you feel about this one? Mm. It never stops, does it? Um, the game, the game has changed in in the world of goalkeeping. It, it seems with it switched town uh, for all the world. It looked like ba ba Bachelav Hagki was was uh, was the number one target. That's how that's how we were described. Told about him, he was the the man they wanted. They pivoted away from Benjamin Segrist because he became available, and they went and got him. Trouble mm. is. He's not started the season particularly well. He looks nervous. Uh, a few goals you can point to hit, point at him for. Crosses have been a bit of an issue, and I guess with all that in mind, it's not entirely surprising that they've got to this stage of the window and don't fancy doing the next four months with a with a goalkeeper they don't feel entirely entirely confident in. It's one of the most important positions on the field. We've seen the ups and we've seen the downs of of goalkeepers at Ipswich Town in the last few few years and um I think they needed some insurance and they've gone and got it mm. and, and in Walton Paul Cook's brought in a guy that he's worked with before he's very familiar with him played with him I think he had him on loan twice didn't he at Wigan including including winning promotion from this league with him and then playing in the championship so um how do you feel about Walton as a keeper um what do you know about him um what's he going to bring to this side he's obviously mm. got experience at this level and above yeah for, look, you can't you, you can't really look at Paul Cook and and argue that with it because he's brought in a goalkeeper that he's had for for mm. two seasons, both like you say in League One, winning the title in seventeen eighteen, and then keeping them in the Championship the following year. So clearly, clearly Cook's going to have confidence in him. I'll be honest; that we only see these players when they play against Ipswich generally, and um, he's always done okay. Uh, I hear mixed mixed reviews about him. From some, some will tell you about the incredible, incredible shot stopping. Um, um, and spectacular saves, which are obviously so blinding and, and good on highlights videos. I think the knock on him maybe for not getting to where he needed to be at Brighton was perhaps his kicking, um, mm. which is maybe why he's moved on from there. And then I think he's hitting from from reviews. I think Blackburn fans might tell you he was a bit hit and miss with balls into the box, whereas Wigan fans will tell you that he coped really well with that. So mixed reviews. Um and you just got to trust Paul Cook on this one, I guess. He's a he's a goalkeeper that comes with a, a good reputation, a really good reputation. Actually, he's been through the England setups and, and things like that. He was making his way at Brighton and doing doing really well there. So uh, I guess you have to feel positive about about this one. But we've we've seen the ups and downs of goal signing goalkeepers from from Premier League benches um, with Will Norris in the past, who, who didn't it didn't always work out, does it? So hopefully, hopefully this one works out a bit better. Mm. They're always good shot stoppers, aren't they? You never hear a keeper referred hmm. to as not. not oh, he's not a very good shot stopper, but he's brilliant at <laughs> kicking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they play in midfield. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those, those ones. Yeah. Um, so, are we thinking that this that the Walton's come in now to be the starter? As you say, there, hadkey has been been struggling. There's still Holy as backup. I don't know what this really says about Holy's chances of ever playing for Town again. But um, you'd think that Walton's going to go straight into the team, wouldn't you? They've got a, a bit of a longer time now mm. to before the next game. I'd imagine so. Yeah. Um, look, I think I think the biggest tick on Christian Walton is, is that Paul Cook has worked with him and had real success with him. So I, I'd be mm. very surprised if he wasn't particularly given the long run up to the next game that he, he doesn't come into the side. Um, very tough on on Hladke. Obviously came down here with this was almost something of a big break for him. Um, mm. a, a first sort of stab at a real top club in British in British football, and it, it hasn't it hasn't been an absolute horror show, but it's. Um, there's been jitters and it's just not a position you can afford to to, to maybe have carry someone that, that you're not feeling overly confident about. This fits with everything we heard back in May when, mm. when we, we reported about the, the major squad cull and that everyone being allowed to leave. We we heard then that, that Cook wasn't impressed with either of his goalkeepers at that time, Holy and Cornell. Um, clearly this shifts Holy down to, to third choice and you have to wonder at this stage whether they might try and find a a new a new home for him because um like you say his chances of getting on the field um next to next to nil i would suggest at this stage mm. that brings us on nicely andy to the wider picture transfer window the deadline day the window slams shut tomorrow night at 11 p.m um that's tuesday night if you're watching this um new homes new faces more more new faces could be set for it switch town bursant selena 
um, the link that we we brought to you earlier in the summer, um, then had a COVID issue, which affected his heart, which sounded quite scary. But now it appears that he may indeed be back on. It sounds that way, yeah. Um, I don't think it's one that's ever gone away from Mark Ashton's desk. Um, the way that mm. one's been described to us is that the signing of Selena would be the cherry on top of what is becoming an increasingly big cake uh, in terms of summer summer signings. Um, they were going to do their business, recruit the squad they wanted to recruit in the areas they wanted to recruit. And if they could get this done, they would simply slap it on top, regardless of the fact Louis Barry is here, Sonny Aluko is here, Scott Fraser, Wes Burns, Kyle Edwards, uh, Bursant Salina could well be joining that list as attacking options for behind that behind that striker there. He's over that COVID issue. He's been given the all clear to train again. He's been called up for international duty and likely his return from in, injury or illness would, would be for Kosovo in, in the next few days. But before that happens, there's every chance a loan deal gets done here at, at Ipswich Town. And um, whatever you think of it, you, you can't argue that it's not an eye-catching one. Yeah, yeah. Um... To, to evoke the ghost of Christmas past, Mick McCarthy, that's bonkers, isn't it? Bursant Selena on top of all those other options you've mentioned. I mean, how do you feel about them signing all these attackers, Hutchie? They've got to play elsewhere on the pitch as well, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I, look, I don't think they're ignoring other areas on the pitch. This is very much they got the sense that they could get this one done. And if they do mm. get it over the line, they'll be delighted about it. I, if I was Louis Barry or, or Sonny Aluko, I, um, you know, I wouldn't wouldn't be ecstatic about it but I, I don't think anyone could really argue that he doesn't he's not going to bring something something even even better to that attacking three he's actually played a lot of his football centrally since he he was here at Ipswich particularly at Dijon so mm. could he, he could even be lining up in in that number 10 but if he does play wide and he's mainly played wide left actually um a little bit of wide right but if you had Bursant Selina on one side Kyle Edwards on the other um I don't think anybody could argue that that is not a major, <laughs> major upgrade on anything Ipswich have had there in, in recent, in the last couple of years at least. Yeah, mouth-watering prospect, certainly at this level, to have that kind of attacking weaponry in, in your arsenal. Um, how about elsewhere on the pitch, Andy? We've we, we spoken, um, in fact, I'm not sure we've spoken, we've certainly written about Sam Morsey, um, a midfielder, potentially another target. Is there any update there ahead of ahead of deadline day tomorrow? Um, no, no real update. That was Stuart's story on on that one. Um, mm. I don't even remember when that was. This is all moving. <laughs> this is sun, Sunday. Might have yeah. been. The, um, yeah. Um, but clearly, he's in the Walton the Walton camp here. He's he's a player that Cook knows. He's not only knows him. He's had him at, at Chesterfield and um, and Wigan as well. He's been his captain. Um, I've had some people describe him as being Paul Cook's love child. Um, <laughs> so. In terms of players that Cook knows and trusts, I don't think you would tick more boxes than Sam Morsey. It's a difficult deal to do. He's on a significant wage wage mm. at Middlesbrough, who themselves aren't desperate for him to leave. I think they're looking at midfielders themselves. If they get them, maybe they would they would sanction it. It's not an easy one for Ipswich to do. It's not one they can just click their fingers and get done, but it it's one that they really want to get done. And I think Anyone who's watched the last few games will see that it's in a position where they probably need to get something done. So whether it's Morsey or somebody else, um, I think that position in midfield is um, is one that could and really should get filled by the 11pm deadline. Mm. That deadline, of course, is tomorrow. Are we expecting a, a busy day? It's traditionally a quiet period at Ipswich Town deadline day, but things have very much changed this summer. So what kind of deadline day are you expecting tomorrow, Andy? Well, Mark Ashton hates deadline days. He, he, in an ideal world, he doesn't want to be doing business on deadline days. But I don't think he would, as far as describing this summer as being his ideal world. It's been, mm. it's been crazy. It's, it's going to be eighteen, nineteen, twenty signings. Um, it feels like it's deadline day today. Um, yeah. that, that they've kind of moved it forward twenty four hours to to try and get everything done before then I, I don't think it will all get done in that time so yeah I, I think it could be a not crazy but fairly fairly busy deadline mm. day um with hopefully their business done done today uh exits potentially of course as well um Ashton spoken about how hard that's been actually moving some players out so you've still got Miles Kenlock for example sitting in the training with the under-23s but not playing with them. He's one that could clearly move on. You, you've got to think that 
Yes, yes, Selena's not a striker, but he he's very much a kind of a central attacker. I, I think at some point you have to think, is Caden Jackson going to move on? He's not exactly had the biggest market this summer, so it's not a given. Yeah, and there are, there are other players in in there too. Maybe a loan for Idris Elbazuni. Amando Dobra will go out on loan before before the deadline. Cle- clearly, Selena makes that path for him even more treacherous. So, and and same with Elbazuni. I think the two of them need to be on loan because they're simply not going to be not going to be playing here. So there, there are there's some things that are going to happen before the the window closes. Mm. One thing it never is at the moment is dull, Andy. Um, follow all of the, the transfer deadline day stuff with us tomorrow. Andy, myself, uh, Ross, will be working tomorrow. Lots happening. Um, and we'll catch you next time.